All right, so if you recall, the last time we visited our in-class assignment, we had a couple of issues. Um, one of them was when we created our, um, our, our second master page, we had this issue going on where we have our text frames not aligned within the margins. I think the reason for that was um, the, uh, the, the start master page that we set up was just one page. Um, and for some reason, that must have affected all these left-hand pages. Uh, and to be honest, not totally sure why, but um, I'm sure we can figure it out. But what I've done oops, is, uh, let's see, what I have done is just manually moved my text frames on all my left pages uh, so that they fit within the margins, and, and you should do the same thing. <clears throat> okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is create a, a nested character style within a paragraph style. So if you recall, we had these two paragraphs, and I'm on page five, you can see, and actually, I have downloaded this cool new feature that highlights what I'm pointing to, and I learned that uh, I can, let's see, turn on a little zoom window too, so you can see. So I'm going to try to use those. It might be a little clunky for a minute until I get used to it, but it should be helpful. So in these two paragraphs that tell us a little bit about these authors, we may find it useful to use a character style for the names of these authors. Um, <clears throat> we could, if we wanted to, just highlight uh, these characters, make them a different color, make them a different size, and adjust them manually if we wanted to. Um, but having a nested character style is, is a cool feature and a very useful one if you have multiple paragraphs where you're going to be applying the same thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is come and turn on my character style, which is here. I don't know, maybe this will get annoying to have everything highlight like that, but I'm going to turn on uh, my new character style, the little plus sign. I'll double click on the character style itself. And I'm going to call this uh, character style author name. Uh, certainly it's not going to be based on italic. Come over to the basic character formats. And let's pretend right now uh, I've got the author name set in um, Chaparral Pro, which I know because I have Chaparral Pro up here in my character um, control panel. Maybe I can move that away. Okay. So let's say I want to make these author names maybe in our display text just so that it's kind of related and kind of fun. Um, we'll leave it oblique because uh, the rest of that paragraph is set in italics and so we want the oblique to match. Um, and just for fun, let's make it a slightly larger size. So let's say we want this to be, I believe currently it's at a 9. Um, Oh, actually, it's at an 8. So let's make this a little bit bigger, give it some good contrast, and make it a 12. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll say 12 points. And then just for fun, just so we can really see the difference this makes, let's make it a red color. So you have this red by default just in your uh, swatches panel. And I just went to the character color um, uh, menu, and I'll just select this red color. And because my preview button is on, notice that all of the changes that I'm making are happening. So we'll do that. We'll hit OK. OK, and that's great. So we have like a very large name that's a different color, a different typeface, a lot of contrast there. <clears throat> now, if I want the same thing to happen to Robert S. Means, the name Robert S. Means, but I don't want the hassle of highlighting it and applying that character style, what I can do is embed that character style within the paragraph style that I have set here. So we'll come over to our paragraph styles. And this first, this Connie Lamb paragraph, I have the author info paragraph style set. So I'll open that up. And if I come to the drop caps and nested styles menu, I have a nested styles uh, area right in the middle here. I'll select a new nested style. This drop down will pull up all of the character styles that I've created. So we remember that I made one called author name. And I can create this through or up to 
I'll leave it through. And I can choose the number of words, or I can also look at sentences, characters, letters, letters digits, this end nested style character, which we'll talk about in a minute, or a whole bunch of other things. So there's a lot of options here. What I want to do, <clears throat> because Connie Lamb is two words and Robert S. Means is technically three words, I'm going to use the end nested style character. Now, if Robert S. Means didn't insist by going by having his middle initial in his name, and his name were just Robert Means, we could just select author name through two words, and uh, and that would be very simple. But because Connie Lamb is two words, Robert S. Means is three words, we're going to use this end nested style character. So, <coughs> excuse me. What I need to do now is apply that end nested style character. So I'll hit OK, and obviously this isn't going to work. I want to place my cursor right at the end of the, the last word that I want this character style applied to, and then I'm going to come up to my type menu, and I will come down and select insert special character, and I believe it's under other, and end nested style here. So I'll turn off that uh, that that zoom so that you can kind of see it better. So type insert special character other end nested style here. And that you can see, and I will zoom in on that, just creates a little symbol that looks like a slash. Um, and, it, and it applies it right after that name. So that's great. And you'll notice that when I've done that, now that I've done that, uh, only the text before that end nested style character here has that character style applied to it. So I'll do the same thing for Robert S. Means. I'll put my cursor right at the end of his name, come up to type, insert special character, other, and end nested style here. And now I have the same effect for his name. So that's pretty cool. That's a nice little way that you can, uh, that you can use those um, embedded character styles um, right within your paragraph style. Now, uh, if I were going to apply this same um, paragraph style, this author info paragraph style, uh, let's just do it for fun here, you could see that it applies that character style to the whole paragraph because there's no end nested style character in this paragraph. I could select anywhere in this paragraph, go to type, insert special character, other, and end nested style here, and then the rest of that paragraph would, uh, would be normal according to the attributes that we set up in the paragraph style itself. So we'll undo that. So it's kind of cool. That is nested, nested character styles within a paragraph style.